A receita gerada pelo e-commerce no Brasil chegou a 18,7 bilhões de reais em 2011, o que representa um crescimento de 26% em relação a 2010, quando o setor movimentou 14,8 bilhões de reais, segundo o um estudo publicado pelo IBIT essa semana. No total, mais de 32 milhões de brasileiros compraram ao menos uma vez este ano em sites de e-commerce. Destes, 9 milhões realizaram sua primeira compra pela internet, sendo mais da metade, 61%, pertencentes à classe C. Nesse contexto, a expectativa é que o e-commerce movimente, no decorrer de 2012, 23,4 bilhões de reais. Somente na primeira metade do ano, são esperados cerca de 10,4 bilhões de reais em vendas, o que representa 45% da perspectiva de venda para esse ano. Uma curiosidade sobre esse evento. O público participante desse congresso é formado por 70% de varejistas de médios e grandes negócios e 30% de fornecedores. O perfil profissional, 60% são diretores ou sócios e especialistas das duas áreas que vamos discutir, que é search e vendas. Para dar início às atividades neste dia, convido ao palco o Elcio Santos, sócio e diretor, Head de e-commerce da Única, pós-graduado em Marketing de Serviços e Gestão Empresarial, com larga experiência em comunicação digital para compor o palco. Bom dia, Elcio. Bem-vindo. Por favor. Passa a palavra agora para a palestrante, ela é russa, é a primeira vez dela ao Brasil, a Yulia Smirnova, tem um blog que é muito reconhecido mundialmente pelo conteúdo que escreve, escreve com muita frequência desde 2008, sempre tem temas relevantes sobre marketing digital. Ela é, a, já atuou na otimização de marketing online, é SEO, Uh, para conversão, fazendo conversão em marketing online para grandes empresas como Intel, Microsoft, Texas Instruments. Yulia, seja bem-vinda. Thank you. Bom dia, everyone. Senhoras e senhores. I'm very happy to be here with all of you here tonight, or this morning. Um, I'm going to talk about um, e-commerce trends within U.S. and Europe that I have observed over the last year. And um, most of those things I have done based on the research that um, I looked uh, through the third-party publications. I also talked to some people within the industry events, uh, mostly search, um, and also from the prior experience. This is my first time in Brazil. I've never been here before, so I'm very happy and excited to kick off e-commerce uh, e search Brazil. And uh, being here with all of you is a big honor for me. Um, as uh, it was said before, uh, I currently do uh, SEO for Shopping.com, which is eBay company. I also have done uh, some kind of uh, online marketing for Microsoft, Texas Instruments, uh, Intel, and um, most of my speech will be touching on natural search optimization, uh, conversion optimization, and finding new sources of traffic. Um, I wanted to see where is my clicker. Great. So uh, the first uh, thing, the first strategy that I have seen is uh, growing organic traffic, growing search rankings visibility, because this is something that can really make a difference for your business. It is a no-brainer that SEO can make a lot of things for you. It performs consistently and sometimes at a fraction of a cost of a paid search. And if you do it right from the very beginning, uh, it will be there for you. So for small companies, 
um, it can actually be a good lever to uh, compete with big guys. And for um, big organization, it's a good way to uh, scale your uh, initiatives, marketing initiatives, and uh, increase your ROI and decrease cost per lead. And when I think about um, organic search, um, I think that this is something that's not really much tapped in in e-commerce and sometimes can be very hard. The second strategy that I've seen is reducing noise, extra steps, pre-checkout, because in e-commerce, all you need to do is get this qualified traffic, capture that, and convert it fast. Sometimes within the first three clicks, if possible, that goes through the overall user experience. And um, the trick here is not to lose any time and get rid of the extra steps, clicks, and pages. Uh, the third strategy is tapping into impulse buys. Uh, and this is something that um, have been uh, noticed by some of the marketers within US, and I will go over that. The fourth one is tapping into discovery buys, which is completely opposite from the impulse buys. And the fifth one is catering to local needs when you go try to expand your uh, business overseas, but you have to deliver by local means. So when I think about organic search, I think of Google as a place, as a broker for all that space. And um, if you really want to uh, optimize that, you need to uh, watch what search engines are doing when it comes to their algorithm. And if you're playing in resonance with their uh, new innovations, you can really tap into this opportunity. And though natural search is free traffic, you have to still uh, spend some time to make it work. Uh, otherwise, you're not going to get anything. And Google has been very, um, um, very serious about it, how you do SEO. Yet, uh, there are still opportunities that uh, might be opening up based on what is happening within SEO. Uh, over the last year, there have been a lot of changes. And uh, for example, SEO content is no, more, uh, no longer about keyword research. It's about content. It's about quality, uniqueness, originality, freshness. Social discovery is very hot. This is something like companies like Pinterest and so forth that allow you to uh, post pictures of the products you like or um, any interesting information about the brands. And then um, the brands and the companies, they can actually get a lot of external links and social engagement through that. And those social signals becoming more important when it comes to links and other inbound links are actually losing their weight uh, in the eyes of Google. So whatever we have done in SEO before, optimizing the anchor uh, text and so forth, now uh, becomes a little bit less important. Um, images index is expanded uh, much bigger these days. Uh, so, and freshness of those images matters. For e-commerce, it's important because you want to have your images um, showing up in search. This is a great opportunity. There are more balanced um, search results when it comes to Google. No longer they're going to show a lot of links and pages from the same site. So that means you have to be creative uh, in your efforts. Local is growing, and Google even is trying to tap into uh, mobile recommendations. International uh, launch of shopping rich snippets, which I will touch upon later, is also been uh, much more supported. That was announced uh, uh, two weeks ago at SMX West in California. Paid search is occupying more space, and mobile starts weighing in. Um, and probably with the HTML5 is going to be much more easy because you have to develop only once uh, for various devices. Um, so it looks promising. And Google is trying to pay attention to mobile. So at some point, it's going to become very soon one of the signals within the uh, ranking. 
And of course, uh, rail author tag, which is also part of rich snippets, uh, is becoming a major factor because Google is thinking about uh, author ranking. So while Google uh, real estate is getting crowded and integrating with social, uh, local, and personal, you still have opportunities uh, to explore, uh, like rich snippets, universal search, social integration, unique original content worthy of sharing, pinning, liking, mobile freshness of the site. The first case that I've seen of implementations of rich snippets is bestbuy.com. It's an electronics e-commerce site. And when they did that, they saw 30% uh, lift in uh, click-through rate from Google. Um, and again, just to give an idea about rich snippets, I think most of you are pretty sophisticated what it is in knowledge, but those are uh, little pieces of information about your products, like prices, reviews, um, events, that you can mark up uh, for your pages, for your current content, so that you can compete better and differentiate your listings on Google. And uh, so other companies uh, in US that implemented uh, rich snippets actually were saying the range of boosting uh, click-through rate from Google is 36% to 400. And that's because it can be 400 if you've been really far, um, maybe page three or four, and now your content is showing up. So that's why there is such a big gap. Last week, uh, some companies were boasting about implementing rel author tag, which um, helps you if you have blogs, because you can really mark up your content and build the authority, and now it's completely yours. And they've seen a very um, uh, interesting lift of from five to 10% of SEO traffic. That's not even CTR, it's actual traffic, uh, within the first two weeks. So you can see how, um, how easy it could be done or uh, because doing rich snippets can be um, a low hanging fruit for you and something that you can implement rather fast. So some of the e-commerce sites that have been doing it are uh, Alba Moda in Germany and of course Overstock, um, Ticketmaster um, and so forth. The next uh, case study I have is about Advanced Auto Parts. It's a site that sells different car parts. And um, they've been very good in optimizing universal search. And of course, universal search, blended search, has been around since 2009. But not everybody is playing with that, that field. What they did, uh, they launched a video program on their product pages. Uh, they placed the videos about different parts and also uh, videos how to change a part within your car. And what they experience is um, significant conversion lift for product pages and also uh, for specifically for the first time visitors. So definitely there is a reduction of cost per lead and they've seen um, expansion within reach on Google. Beautiful job. Oyster.com is another study that uh, I've looked at. This is a small company um, based in Seattle. And uh, this is a good example how small companies can benefit within SEO. They actually uh, put quality content and SEO is part of their product strategy. And as you can see, they've been enjoying um, pretty healthy uh, share of natural search uh, to overall site traffic. So it's 55% is free traffic, 5% uh, is direct. Uh, Oyster.com, it's a um, hotel site. The, the difference between others is that they actually go to hotels and take interesting pictures, real life pictures. Um, and uh, there is a lot of interaction. So it's really unique content. And of course, no wonder, one of the founders is the guy who worked for Microsoft and Bean. So he made sure that his site is SEO friendly. Uh, social integration is something that's uh, going on a lot. All of you probably have uh, buttons for Facebook, Orkut, Twitter on your pages. But what actually um, 
sets apart some of the top e-commerce sites, how they integrated in the shopping experience. Fab.com is a subscription site, and they do have um, very interesting implementation how you share the deal. Um, it's very hard to see here, but where there is a line, it says, share this sale and earn cash. So of course I'm gonna do this uh, sharing. Uh, I'm motivated, I'm gonna save money on the current uh, um, product, and I'm gonna provide a lot of interaction and linking for this um, company. And no wonder that fab.com actually is enjoying 61% of their traffic from Facebook and about 6% from Google. And imagine if this, most of the content of the site were open to Google. Uh, it could be huge. So um, the second strategy that I mentioned uh, touches upon reducing noise and extra steps uh, pre-checkout. Uh, this is something that um, Amazon does well, Zappos too, uh, within the first three clicks. And uh, the idea is that people really don't want to uh, spend too much time tinkering with your pages. And you want to also provide them enough information so that uh, they already pick uh, which to buy from what to buy. Because majority of people really do know what they want to buy. It also means... Um, that you um, need to see what is happening in the actual shopping cart process that you can uh, put beforehand. So you help with again with the decision which one and you also remove pages and clicks. I have a good example with uh, shopstyle.com. I love their site. They uh, provide a window, great window shopping experience for the users. With this slider, vertical slider, I can go and see all their merchandise within a specific category. Uh, this is a search result page. And it's also implemented very well when it comes to SEO, how to deal with duplicate content and pagination. So, but what's better, what's better is that uh, shop style converts without product pages. And of course, it's a lead generation site. It's not uh, the site that sells direct, but yet, um, you know, all I do is I just hover over the bag that I really want to buy right now, boom, and I can uh, go to the merchant site. It's very easy. If I don't like it, I go and look again. And of course, you can see there is uh, implementation of uh, good um, integration of social, PIN and Facebook. Another company uh, that I found interesting is evo.com. They sell uh, a lot of different gear for uh, snowboarding and uh, skiing. And uh, what they've noticed is that some customers uh, leave uh, the shopping cart uh, to compare uh, with other products or they change their mind on the color of the jacket. And so they moved those features right into the category pages and search result pages, and they saw significant lift in conversions. And then uh, for Brazil, I mean, that specific information probably would be um, number of installments. You can uh, pay for the merchandise shipping, uh, which could be big because this is something that still uh, is uh, a good opportunity. Not everybody can provide free shipping or even good uh, reliable shipping. But those are the things that uh, drive people uh, to make decisions faster. So now that you have all these customers flying through your funnels fast at the speed of light, you want to also find opportunities for them to shop more. Uh, you want them to shop 24-7. I think here mobile is very widespread. A lot of people I see using iPhones and doing a lot of things mobile. And I myself is very connected. Um, here in Brazil, I don't uh, have data subscription. I decided not to pay it AT&T. And I feel so isolated because all the time I'm so used to checking of all those things I'm doing online, going to Facebook, uh, trying to uh, make reservations and seeing what's happening around, uh, using Google Maps. Now I feel completely lost without it. So, and of course I don't speak Portuguese. That makes it more interesting. So what you really want uh, to do is to provide those opportunities to shop anywhere, everywhere. And there was some research done with eMarketer and they noticed that 
41% of smartphone users who are researching different goods, they actually also buy from uh, with uh, smartphones. And then um, travel companies dominate a top 10 uh, in mobile commerce per internet retailer. I know that we have some people here from travel, um, uh, travel industry category and some of the speakers as well. 85% um, of frequent flyers use smartphones and they adopt mobile shopping. So mobile is very expected, lost, and it can be lost opportunity if you don't have it because uh, people uh, want uh, to do that. 51% more likely to purchase from retailers when mobile is friendly. But if your mobile experience sucks, 40% of those people uh, would visit competitor's site and buy from them. Which means uh, for you, it's an opportunity to grab the share of traffic from your competitors if you have better mobile. And if you already have uh, mobile experience, definitely optimize it because um, you can lose your loyal uh, customers because they would be frustrated. And so, um, that's, uh, I call this opportunity tapping into impulse buys on the go last minute markets. In the US, a lot of people um, are used to comparison shop and um, making a lot of decisions on the go. So this market um, is a big potential for a lot of uh, merchants. And that's what they see that, um, see, mobile loves travel as I mentioned because it's a great situation when things change, when you have your uh, reservations change, when the plane decides uh, is delayed, you need to make other changes, or you don't want to get stuck with a uh, hotel that airline gives you because it's right next to the airport. You don't want to be in a big city next to the airport. So you have the option to uh, book your own uh, travel and still save on it. You don't have to pay the full price. And then mobile drives um, instant gratification. So at least within the US, uh, people are used to getting things fast and right away. Um, and that means that um, if I wanna consume something right now on the go, I better get it. And some of the uh, top retailers are optimizing for this experience as well. And then what they've noticed while playing around with mobile, mobile and email um, is a perfect match in heaven in a way that uh, it complements well. Uh, I've been to New York two weeks ago and um, I'm a customer of Hotels.com. I had my reservation, everything was fine. But during that week I got five different emails from Hotels.com telling me about last minute um, hotel deals or also things I can do around the area in New York. And of course, you know, I didn't really pay my attention, except you know, a week later I had to book um, some hotel in Rio, and of course I went to hotel.com because they kept me um, thinking about them. So um, email really triggers um, the shopping behavior. It makes people go back and check on mobile again and again. So, <laughs> For the case studies, I, uh, oops, I have, uh, let's go back, that happens. I have Hotels.com mobile app. Um, during the last uh, year, they doubled their mobile bookings. And what is interesting is that on their mobile app, you can um, make uh, reservations uh, for hotels within hours versus, versus within days, because um, this, is a, some, this is the behavior of last minute booking that they're trying to tap into. And then when I looked at uh, their email marketing from compete.com, I actually have seen the trend of uh, high growth in email marketing that uh, hotels.com is doing. It's probably from 70 to 250% uh, increase year over year. So they're doing something right. And uh, let's see. 
Uh, this industry is so big that uh, there are some companies that just have an application. Uh, they don't have a site or any uh, or even uh, bricks and mortar uh, presence. It's only an app, and uh, they uh, tap into this market of last-minute bookings. And you can uh, get a great deal, a not full price for the hotel within a few hours and minutes. And they're growing very fast. Uh, a good example with Fandango.com, it's an entertainment site, movie site that uh, resells different tickets. And what they did, they just had one feature uh, on their mobile app that um, brought a lot of growth for their customer base. This feature is a go now. Um, what it does, uh, when I'm, um, l let's say I'm a spontaneous shopper and I decided to, um, I, I have a free moment all of a sudden, what I can do, I can look um, what are the movies playing around in the area, and uh, they show um, what is playing within the increments from five to 10 to 20 minutes, and I can go and book it and see it. Uh, this is perfect. I mean, I've used it before. Um, very good for spontaneous shopper. And when I looked at the mobile growth from Compete, it's over 1,000%. I mean, this is huge. So mobile is something that definitely needs to be explored, uh, even though it might uh, be challenging. The fourth strategy is tapping into discovery bias. Discovery bias is something that happens when you have a lot of time and uh, or you are shopping for a high-priced item. So uh, you really want to compare and see what's happening. or maybe you don't want to search um, and see a bunch of results because you don't have time or uh, you have a specific idea what you want and um, if some merchants look at this behavior differently and uh, look at the creative opportunities within merchandising they can actually uh, make those customers act on those expectations so uh, examples of what merchants are pursuing is curated merchandising, uh, also showing not all um, potential inventory that uh, searchers or people who are looking on your site can get, but looking at collections or brands and, and only showing three or four items to shoppers, and thus uh, they also increase the decision-making process. Um, let's see. The second one is... I have to take a pause. Uh, make me a match. So this is um, different opportunities within the site experience features that help customers to maybe upload some of the expectations they have about what they want and you match them through visual search or any other uh, technology um, and get them what they want. And of course, coach or bedroom commerce is something that's been uh, utilized in the US. It's also um, called tablet shopping. Um, this is very big and uh, most of the tablet shoppers spend more uh, uh, doing uh, their um, research. iPad just recently, uh, two weeks ago, came out with a new uh, versions and uh, a lot of uh, retailers in the US predict um, double digit growth for that uh, segment. And um, it's called coach uh, shopping because a lot of people do it in the couch or in bed. So uh, I have a really good uh, example with art.com, a company from um, San Francisco. They had uh, a feature match my image or inspire my discovery. This is sort of make me a match. Um, that allows customers to upload an image of uh, something they've seen in the museum and maybe they want to uh, buy this product for uh, their friend as a gift or um, maybe it's hard for them just to search using keywords uh, on site search to see what they want and visual search really helps to deal with this feature. You upload your image and boom, you get what you want. And they've noticed that those customers actually spend uh, twice as much uh, and they also convert 75% faster, which means that if you provide other opportunities for your shoppers, current uh, base uh, to shop, you um, marginally add your traffic in your conversions. 
Another example I have is uh, with um, Wine.com, which is a US company. They have 6% uh, of iPad traffic uh, to total traffic. And this is uh, still big. Um, last night I was talking to someone here from Wine.com Brazil, which is a separate company, and they're enjoying 8% of their traffic uh, from uh, tablets, from iPad. And even though you would say, well, what is 8%, 6%, kind of small to the overall share, but last year, at least the Brazilian side, uh, at least what Paula told me, they had only 2% traffic from uh, tablets, and today it's 8 So this is huge. It's 300% growth over uh, the year. Uh, going back to um, Vine.com, they also noticed that those shoppers spend uh, more, on average, and uh, <sighs> they uh, they also receive eight percent of total revenue from this six percent of shoppers. And on the last day of Christmas uh, last year, last holiday season, they enjoyed twenty percent of their revenue coming from uh, tablet shoppers. So this is a huge opportunity. And even in Brazil, it's something that's been pursued very well. Um, last night I also spoke to Pedro from Itau, which is online banking, and they're tapping into that. And all he could tell me is that this is very hot market. So. The fifth strategy that I've noticed is um, catering to local needs by delivering by local means. And this is what happens when you already conquered your market and you want to expand overseas. Uh, the top retailers uh, from US that go into Europe, um, like Amazon and Gap, what they've noticed is that you have to go there early and you have to look at Europe as um, uh, as a country-specific market. You cannot look at it as one single market. And you have to um, think about spending a lot of money to build the infra infrastructure and also um, make your marketing and merchandising and even payment options uh, specific to the country. Other companies uh, that are already present in Europe, but let's say they're uh, more, uh, it's a UK company like Tesco, um, they choose a hot category to get in first and then they expand uh, based on the specific category that's hot in that country. For example, in UK, uh, grocery uh, category is very um, booming because you know, most of the cities there are overcrowded. And then, let's say in Italy or Spain, um, obviously clothing and jewelry category are hot or private sales of designer items is growing as well. And um, what the uh, UK merchant is doing, uh, they, they are going and trying to grow that category, whichever category is specific to country, um, one category at a time, one country at a time. Even within the US, this is something that's very typical. So um, three weeks ago, I was in Toronto, and I was very much impressed by uh, how diverse the city, how many people live in there, and everything is um, concentrated in downtown. So, and there are over 1,000 good restaurants uh, in Toronto. So you practically don't have to cook at all. You can enjoy wonderful food, different kinds. There is no bad food. And um, yeah, this is the city I can live in, no cooking. And um, what's great is that, um, Food delivery or uh, grocery delivery business is very booming there because a lot of people don't drive, they maybe also don't have busy lifestyles. So those two companies um, are very hot. And um, this is something that can also be extrapolated to London, and I said, or other markets. I mean, even in Brazil, uh, I heard that delivery of products is a big deal in a way that there is no infrastructure is still built here. It's a big opportunity and you probably can um, tap into that. Obviously you probably have to spend a lot of uh, money doing that. I'm trying to move 
to my next point. Uh, a good example with Estee Lauder, <coughs> a US company that's expanding overseas. I have only example of the payment option here for the Russian side. But um, they, what they do, they have different marketing uh, for Russia, different marketing for Germany, um, different kind of merchandising, how you place different products, um, and different, type, uh, different options how to pay. In Germany, some people uh, can pay with a notes, uh, promised notes. In Russia, there is a web-specific web money application. Uh, but ultimately, they also... Um, you can buy any kind of a product from Easter Lauder, even if it uh, goes into any country, but you, um, you are marketed differently. And you also um, uh, convert uh, based on what is available in this uh, country. So that's uh, something to emulate. So uh, to uh, wrap it up, um, the opportunities that I see obviously again is exploring natural search and investing into content production um, of items worthy sharing every day. Because um, content, uh, this is something that's gonna be showing up on Google a lot. And if you're not uh, doing that, I mean, I've, I've been doing a lot of search for some of the shoe companies here, and I haven't seen much, and maybe because I don't speak the language, but um, there is not a lot of interesting content. So this is still an opportunity that can be tapped into. You, you definitely need to reduce noise and barriers to buy. Uh, feed impulse buys, convert the ways connected shopper uh, to do shopping whenever, wherever. And tap into discovery buys, make your shoppers a match in heaven. And also, uh, if you have opportunity, expand into other markets and countries, but definitely think uh, local and deliver um, based on the local means. So if you do, um, have you noticed some of the companies that just picked one or two things, one or two strategies, and they've been successful? Or maybe it's just one or two features on mobile or tablet app that um, works. So you really don't need to have all of them pursued. But if you do, imagine what can happen. You can actually compete in world domination with one of the big company in the world. Uh, they are the top retailer in US and Europe, and they're doing all those five things that I mentioned. Um, and so is Zappos, which is part of Amazon. So this is all what I have. Um, thank you very much for your patience. Obrigado. And um, questions, welcome. Uh, no doubt that uh, some of them is going to be somehow uh, helpful for all of the distinct audience over here. Uh, one thing that I would like to ask you, uh, Brazil is growing fast in the online marketing and e-commerce is growing even, even fast. Uh, until 2015, uh, prediction says that Brazil is going to take the fourth place in worldwide e-commerce. Uh, among these strategies that you bring to us, uh, what do you think Brazil should do to keep uh, these steps and walk through to consolidate the e-marketing uh, uh, marketing in, Bra in Brazil? Yeah, so um, in Brazil, a lot of things, um, I mean, some of the uh, e-commerce sites that I've seen are already uh, sophisticated enough, and they follow uh, all those basic, um, basic uh, tips that I already shared. But there are also opportunities that they can go and try when it comes to uh, the shipping option or maybe finding the specific need and segments or utilizing tablet and mobile better because maybe it's better for your market. People are more mobile savvy and so forth. And uh, try to take risks. All of these things work. Uh, people shop online the same way as they do in Brazil or US. So you can definitely replicate all the uh, good uh, lessons from US and Europe and um, make things happen for your side. Um, you can get a lot of good ideas, learn from the lessons of companies that failed, um, and uh, definitely grow different uh, segments that may be hot in your country. I heard that baby segment is still open. There is one company that's uh, only there 
or sports categories hot, um, definitely identify the niche and try to tap into that. Because if you, you have a lot of opportunities to be the first entrant here, and when you're first entrant in the market, you enjoy a lot of uh, share. Um, you can also get um, other US companies or top US companies or Europe might come in over here to uh, enjoy Brazil market, but you're already there. You can even sell your company if that's what you want. Um, or you uh, keep the leadership because this is, hey, your country, and this is a lot of opportunities here to tap into. Sure. Uh, before I open up for the, the audience, another question. Uh, we're going to have just after us the CVC. Uh, we're going to be on stage, and they are uh, the biggest uh, company of tourism in Brazil. Uh, and they are looking very closely to the e-commerce marketing. Uh, I've seen some huge numbers, I can't remember the fragments of your deck right now, that the, the top 10 uh, uh, companies that use mobile properly in the US are the travel companies. Uh, what, uh, what clue would you say or would you give for this, this marketing that is pretty important in Brazil and they are looking very close to the e-commerce marketing? Um, just steal their tips, what they do. <laughs> and uh, again, um, it's not just about the channel, mobile or tablets. Uh, it's about looking what people are doing um, when they're shopping. And I think um, based on the customer experience, how they shop, or you see opportunities, the barriers that they have to break. And then um, you just eliminate the barriers and make it easy, fast for them so that they um, just keep shopping. This is, this is like a basic um, need. I mean, you, you just optimize for that. And because um, mobile is uh, very good with the travel experience, a lot of things happen when you travel. You need a lot of information on the go. Sometimes you even don't have to do a lot of research when you go to a different country or place. Um, you know, what do you want to uh, see or do, places to eat and so forth. So mobile provides a lot of opportunities to, uh, to get all this information. I mean, this is something that I really felt when I was here in Brazil and when I was in Toronto. I couldn't get around a lot how I do it in US. I completely um, feel so dependent on my iPhone. Great. Uh, alguém tem alguma pergunta para fazer para Yulia? question are coming. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, how can you do all these things together? For example, reduce the noise while producing more content and trying to make it easier? Uh, how, uh, which tips can you give us to make all these things you thought about? together. How do you do it all together? Um, very good question. So it really depends uh, what company you have. If it's a small company or big company um, and also what resources you currently have. And then um, at least within the search marketing, and I'm only talking about organic, not paid search, um, SEO was uh, only about keywords before and links, and now it's actually integrating all other aspects of marketing. Uh, it has the social media aspect, it has the content marketing, it has user experience. So uh, in, a, in a way, uh, the best marketers and the best uh, companies that will thrive in the future right now, if Google is continue to be uh, a dominating search engine, um, they will be the ones that can do uh, all of those things in integration. Um, and you can probably see what you can focus on. So if you're a small company, uh, you can uh, focus on making your site search engine friendly and also generating a lot of content because all the big e-retailers, they're already uh, visible and they're there and sometimes they dominate uh, search rankings. If you're small, you have more opportunities to create more content fast. If you're a big company like shopping.com or eBay, you can use different vendors to produce uh, content for you uh, at a scalable pace. 
There are uh, companies like Servio, Tax Broker, or Desk. Depending on the level um, of how much content you need to create, they can help you with that as well. So you can create the process and manage them as a vendor. Um, and then maybe you, you can enter one, two, or three things and test what works for you. How much traffic you get from all those initiatives and you invest more in what works for your market, for your segment. Maybe mobile doesn't work for you, but social is perfect because let's say you're selling bags and uh, shoes and this is what people like to put on Pinterest, at least in the US, and share. Um, or videos if you have electronics or very hard uh, to understand product, uh, that can help you as well. Um, so you really need to, ha to test all your marketing initiatives based on how much return investment they give you and then increase uh, the investment um, based on that. But what is happening if you do tap into most of them, you will see that uh, your efforts will generate more return uh, cross-channel um, cross because mobile affects email marketing. Uh, mobile will affect SEO. Uh, social media affects SEO. Um, and even paid search is also playing in a lot of those things. So you can learn a lot of, uh, from integrating all those efforts um, and see results. Yula, I agree completely with you because the, the challenge is just ahead, but depends on the size of the company. They have different challenges to face. They have to do a serious diagnostic of what, what is the strategy, the, the medium long term, and choose the better one for the, the, your business and your size of marketing. We don't have more time to discuss. I'd, li I'd like to thank you very much for your words in your stay here. Uh, we hope that you stay and enjoy a like well, very much Brazil. And I will. your staying real should be perfect. Thank you so much. Obrigado.